Boxburg in 1998, um, an early post-apartheid uh, period, and uh, found a very unequal society there. I also found that there was a great thirst for education, but quality education was hard to find. These students were so anxious for our education that sometimes they came in on two trains and a taxi to reach St. Anthony's. So it was a great privilege to be there. I always remember the words of Nelson Mandela, who was an iconic figure down there. Um, he said that education is the most powerful weapon that you can put into the hands of young people. Mandela also said that a good head and a good heart is a formidable combination, and that if you add to that a pen and a literate mind, you have something very special. I have been extremely lucky in my profession as an educator and in the young people that I have met with, and I miss them very much. I've worked in Africa for over 40 years, in Uganda, Kenya, and Zambia. For over 20 years, I worked on a HIV AIDS ministry because I was a nurse midwife. In Zambia in the 1980s, it was estimated that 25% of the population had HIV infection. And out of a population of 13 million, there were one million orphans as a result of being infected by their mothers. The hospitals were overcrowded and they couldn't cope with all the sick people. So it was obvious that education and home nursing was essential. So we set up a home-based care program. And first we had to train local people from the shanty town and then they went to visit all the patients in their homes. The carers who were volunteers went into the homes, even bathed the patients. And this helped to dispel the fears of many people. I felt it was a great privilege to work with these people who were very deprived. And the people taught me so much by their resilience, their um, trust, their gratitude, and above all, their joy in simple lifestyle. I spent most of my time in Africa, starting in Uganda, Kenya, Zimbabwe, South Africa. What happened in South Africa after the independence, there was a great cry for literacy for those people who had never had an opportunity of any kind of education. I was assigned to Zimbabwe after their independence to reopen a secondary school there. My students were mostly ex-combatants um, they called them the war commander, the boys who'd been behind the scenes during the war. And there were girls as well. And there was a great feeling among them, now we're free, we can do things. And to get education, to do their, what we'd call leaving cert, they could now move on and do fine for themselves. I think a love of people and seeing the need and taking the people from where they are working them where they are, and not to be expecting great things, but to encourage them even when they don't do well. I've been drawn to teaching like steel to a magnet, really. And I think a great love for the young people, a love for learning, and a belief in the transforming power of education is what has kept me uh, so happy to be an educator all my life. To be a good teacher, we must know the level to whom we are addressing. Like these people, they had no background of high education, but they had good hearts and they had good potential. So we had to take them where they were and empower them. It was wonderful to see people blossoming by using their potential, even though they hadn't had much opportunity. So these stories are just some of the thousands of Irish educators who left a global footprint by contributing to their host societies, educating adults and children alike, and people from all backgrounds. So you can read these stories and learn even more at our new temporary exhibition, Irish Educators Abroad, Building Something Wonderful. And I'm delighted to work in conjunction with EPIC and the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade to bring their stories to you.